You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Leo, we understand yeah. this between de facto and de jure segregation, and we understand you're doing it for the money, brother, and, and we understand why you get emotional, too, because it takes a toll when you gotta be the one to dance all the time. But you know the one I was laughing about, Roland, I don't know when this one happened, when Geraldo Rivera went Puerto Rican, New York on him, and he lost his mind because he was caught, he called himself going to roast his sister, uh, our friend, the sister you interviewed. Shara in Jones. Shara Jones, and Geraldo Rivera was like, when the last time you been to the hood? And my man, you know how them, you know how them sell out Negroes get when you question their blackness. They get, because look, I, I risked it all for this check, and you gonna question my, he, he had a meltdown, it was hilarious, bro. Well, since you decided to go ahead and bring that up, I oh, wasn't no. gonna bring it up. <laughs> Roll it. <laughs> Come on, computer, let's go. We wish her the very best of luck with her policy. Uh, Leo, here's the question. She said, I appreciate the role of white allies in this movement of progress. I don't believe that they have the lived experience to lead a majority minority city. Okay, so she said that. This will be an interesting yeah. social experience oh. or perhaps oh, even an experiment. That is the most insulting, racist comment. You know what she's saying? She's saying, because you're white, you don't understand what we as black people go through regarding crime. That makes the assumption then that Joe Biden doesn't know. To say that she is basically in a better position because she's black is insulting, is racist, and it makes no sense whatever. I reject that hey, argument. Hey, Leo, that you have when to was the last time you were in the ghetto? Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Well, how, but she's how saying dare you that you say don't, that, sir? She, I was born, she was, I, was, I live right near the Coliseum. That's where I was I'm born. I'm from Avenue okay? C, dude. Next I'm from Avenue C. How dare you say that? That you know knowledge about that I have you, is helpful. How dare you say that? That knowledge I have is helpful. Insulting. That knowledge that it, I have insulting. from my background what is helpful. What are you trying to draw? Her, her, do you think? Let, let, her, let her try. Let her try. What are you trying to Let her try to... How Let her try you? a How kinder approach. That? Maybe you know, it'll Bill, work. You know what he, we certainly have. You know what Bill just oh, accused me of? The okay. Bill, Bill right. Hammer just accused Bill. You know what Geraldo accused me of? He accused me of living in a particular area that I don't understand. How dare you? I've been a civil rights attorney for 30 years. I have fought against All discrimination right, for 30 years. Okay, Check your Jesus on How earth. You? How dare right, you? Listen, you're fabulous. I love you, Bill. How dare you? Let guys. Hey, we started out in a moment of peace. That moment is fleeting. We'll try again next week. Thank you, Leo. The idiot said, I have fought against discrimination for 30 years, but on the other show, there's no systemic di See? See what happened? See what happened when you start doing a menstrual show? Sometimes you forget the words to the song. And you just start making up words to the song. And uh, Leo Terrell. I've invited him as well as that punk ass uh, Ver Vernon Jones out of Georgia. <laughs> Neither one of them will come talk to black people. Vernon, bring your ass. <laughs> I'll be happy to host you. Then I'll be happy to roast you. <laughs> All right, folks, back to our my unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, 
Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it, please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. There's always a case of people who just don't get it, who literally don't get it. Uh, um, uh, Rob, uh, he, here's, that, here's this idiot Paris Denard. Uh, working for the Republican <laughs> National Committee on Fox News, literally disagreeing with the CDC. Here we go. Heard, when I heard this statement uh, from the CDC director, I was appalled because mm. instead of focusing on health disparities, which we should do because they're real and COVID highlighted those, the CDC is doing the bidding of the Biden administration by once again inserting race, racism, and calling people racist for no reason. That's the Democrat Biden Harris administration playbook. And they're doing this because they want to have the American people think that this nation is inherently racist or systemically racist, but it's not. And I think that all Americans should stand up and ask the question, if these districts, if these communities of color who have been represented by Democrats for so many years are systemically racist, does that make the Democrats who are in control racist as well? I think the CDC should focus on the Communist Party of China. COVID-19 came over to this country and has infected the world, and they should be focused on that. That issue alone is why we have seen so many people die. Yes, disproportionately in the black community, but it's not the fault of racism, it's the fault of China. Focus on that, stand up to China, and stop calling everybody, everything, and everywhere racist. It's wrong. This is what happens oh. when you are stuck on stupid, Rob. <laughs> Harris Denard is an utter idiot for what he just said, uh, and they love to uh, they love to prop up uh, these folks who are just dumb. The CDC, or well, they're calling everyone racist. No, what they're saying is the racism that black people have to deal with on a daily basis has a direct face. impact on the health <laughs> of black people. Yeah, he knows. He, he knows what they're saying. Like, the only only point I have a, a disagreement is I don't think he's dumb. This is a dumbass statement he's making, and he's doing it so he can get. Because look, you can have a black man make the statement. It's profitable to do so. That's the game that's being played. That's the game he's playing. But he's so disingenuous. There's just, just so much to just take apart in what he said. So, uh, I could be you know, on another hour because it's just so much garbage. But let me just get to the basics. He starts off by saying they should focus on health disparities. How the hell do you focus on health disparities without acknowledging the fact that the disparities are there because of a, a racism? Racism is structural. So when he says, oh, well, are you saying Democrats are racist? The system is not individual. It is structural. It means it's built in over time. It's like a virus. Let me break it down for him. It mutates over time. And until you actually get it out and you isolate it, it will stay there. Uh, so, yes, uh, racism has been a part of America. It's not the only part of America. There are certainly good parts, but this is a part, if you want to improve America, you have to look at. You know, I never get conservatives when you say, like, oh, why are you so critical on America? Are you saying all America is racist? What I'm saying is if you actually love a country, I love the country. I want it to be better. You love your kids. Are you going to tell your kids they're great when they're doing things wrong? No, we need to improve. I don't know why this is hard to for him to – put his put to actually put together. And the last part I want to get is he talks about not being racist and then says something racist. He says, we need to blame it all on China. China is the reason why this happens. Knowing we have a rise in, in, in Asian hate right now, he adds that in. So he has to be the black man that throws in some racism at the end uh, just to do just to do the bidding of the Republican Party who wants to have this narrative that if you talk about racism, uh, that's bad. I want I want people, and I spe specifically want people on the right to get 
more offended by racism than they than they do about being called racist. Get mad about the racism. I can tell you, I'd rather be called a racist than go through racism. It is harder to go through racism racism than to be called a racist. These people are so they talk about cancel culture and people uh, uh, giving them a hard time and people not being tough enough and being snowflakes. They're snowflakes. Every time you call them out on stuff, they get offended and and say, "Oh, why'd you say that?" Like, hey, suck it up, Buttercup. Beyond nuts. Uh, Michael, real quick. Well, we, we all know Paris Denard is a professional white behind kisser. That's his whole gang. That's what pays his bills. We understand that. Um, but what I find interesting is that he doesn't want to address specifically what CDC Director Rochelle Walensky talked about. A growing body of research shows the centuries of racism in this country has had a profound and negative impact on communities of color. He doesn't want to deal with that research. And racism existed before the Republican Party was founded in 1854 and before the Democratic Party was founded in 1828. Racism existed in this country. It's a system of advantage and privilege distributed based upon races. And I'll wrap up with this. As Dr. Francis Cress Wilson and Nilly Fuller correctly taught us, if you do not understand European white supremacy and racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you think that you understand will totally confuse you. So what Paris Denard is trying to do on behalf of his people, on behalf of the white people who pay him, is trying to distract and confuse us. So we can't go for that okie doke. Absolutely. Look who he worked for in the White House. All right, and, folks. And Trump, and Trump says systemic racism didn't exist. Got it. All right, folks. Back to our roadmark unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Ah, uh, it's always something when Republicans start just throwing everything out, y'all. And they act like we can't read, like we can't fact check stuff. I mean, it, it really does get hilarious as far as I'm concerned when this happens. So the latest thing now is all the Republicans are making a big deal out of Major League Baseball pulling out of the state of Georgia. Yesterday, I told you how they were trying to make all these comparisons uh, to Colorado and their voting law. So. Now the new thing is, oh, black people are losing money because the All-Star game is getting moved. Now they're saying that, oh, um, if $100 million was going to be generated because of the All-Star game, black businesses and black employees are going to lose half of that. Charles Payne, the brother on Fox, Fox Business, literally posted that tweet today. And I had to take exception to what he had to say about that. And the reason I had to take exception to that is because, y'all, let me just be real clear. All of those economic impact studies done by sports leagues or by cities and counties and states about the economic impact of sporting events, they're all trash. They're all trash. So, for instance, if you say that the Major League Baseball All-Star Game was going to contribute $100 million. Here's what happens. What economists do, they say, oh, 
if X number of people come to a city for an event and they're going to stay in hotels for X number of days and then they're going to eat out X number of times, they're going to rent X number of cars and they can go through this whole formula to try to come up with that number. Economists have been doing that to justify when these sports leagues say, oh, if we build this new stadium, it's going to result in $3 billion of economic activity. It's going to create three and four and 5,000 jobs. Y'all, it happens every time, and they're always lying. The reason I know this is because I was a city hall reporter for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. When Bruton Smith announced that he was going to be building a NASCAR track in Fort Worth, and all of these fantastic reports about how much money was going to be generated, well, not really. Now, now, now NASCAR is a little bit different because typically what happens is a lot of those fans, they'll come and spend the whole week leading up to a race. But when you hear these things about the Super Bowl and NBA All-Star Game and Major League Baseball All-Star Game, these one-off events, they, they, they're mostly lying, y'all. So I, I challenged Charles on this. I said, well, Charles, I need, I need you to somehow show me the numbers. Because he contended in his tweet that black people, black businesses and black employees would be losing 50 million of that 100 million. And he based that upon Atlanta being 51% black. Well, first of all, here's a problem, Charles. And you're a nice guy. The baseball stadium is not in Atlanta. It was moved out to Cobb County. A lot of white folks in Cobb County. Two, how many black people own hotels in Atlanta or Metro Atlanta? I'll wait. And of the black businesses, how, how many of those are restaurants where people are going to be going to eating? Second of all, we have COVID. Stable's not going to be full. So the typical parties corporations throw events, golf tournaments, using event planners, catering companies, limo companies. None of those things are going to be happening. So the $100 million is really nonsense. And so it's another point that I obliterated. Now, yeah, they just walk folks down with facts because they can't handle those Facts. All right, folks, back to our whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially at Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Mark Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Stunning, shocking testimony today in the trial of ex-Minneapolis police officer Derek Shogan. Shogan, it focus on the cause of George Floyd's death. Prosecutors called a respiratory expert and a forensic toxicology expert to the stand to adjudicate George Floyd's demise. Folks, this is uh, stunning what took place in the courtroom today. Watch this. So we see here that he reaches a level of zero of oxygen at 20, 25, 41. And so at that point, there's not an ounce of oxygen left in his body, in his entire body at at 20, 25, 41. 
And so was the knee then lifted off of his neck at the point there was no more oxygen in his body? No, the knee remained on the neck for another three minutes and two seconds after we reached the point where there was not a one ounce of oxygen left in the body. Thank you, doctor. Have you formed an opinion to a reasonable degree of medical certainty as to what the cause is uh, or was for the low level of oxygen in Mr. Floyd? Yes, I have. Would you tell us what that is? The cause of the low level of oxygen was shallow breathing. Small breaths, small tidal volumes, shallow breaths that weren't able to carry the air through his lungs down to the essential areas of the lungs that get oxygen into the blood and get rid of the carbon dioxide. That's the alveoli at the bottom of the lung. Officer Chauvin's uh, knee is coming in and that's compressing in against his side as well. So the ability to expand his left, uh, left side here is enormously impaired. And also you're seeing that the size of the chain between the two, the right side and the left side, is very short. So he, his whole left arm is also being pulled over. And so it's preventing him also from expanding the right side. I've been focusing on the bucket handle and the pump handle on the left, but you can also see here that these are impaired, his ability to expand his chest. And of course, the key factor you must keep that isn't kind of, in a sense, seen here in one sense, is the street. The street is what is having a huge effect because he's jammed down against the street. And so the street is playing a major role in preventing him from expanding his chest. As we discussed, you're seeing a more clear view here, how it's been really rammed into the back of his back. There's just no way he's going to be able to expand that. But with this, the left image, you see the finger on the street. Then over on the right image, you see his knuckle against the tire. And to most people, this doesn't look terribly significant. But to a physiologist, this is extraordinarily significant. Because this tells you that he has used up his resources and he is now literally trying to breathe with his fingers and knuckles because when you begin to breathe, you begin to breathe with your rib cage and your diaphragm. The next thing you recruit after that is your sternomastoid muscle, which is the big muscle in your neck. And then when those are wasted up, then you're re relying on these types of muscles like your fingers to try and stabilize your whole right side because he's totally dependent on getting air into the right side. So he's using his fingers and his knuckles against the street to try and crank up the right side of his chest. This is his only way to try and get air to get into the right lung. Uh, do you have an opinion to a reasonable degree of medical certainty as to whether a person who had none of those pre-existing health conditions, a healthy person, would have died under the same circumstances as Mr. Floyd? Yes, a healthy person subjected to what Mr. Floyd was subjected to would have died as a result of what he was subjected to. So Mr. Floyd's ratio is, is roughly just a little bit below the median ratio in DUI. So in post-mortem cases, we know uh, fentanyl concentrations can be much higher than norfentanyl concentrations uh, because frequently these are, the, uh, these are deaths due to fentanyl. Other drugs may be present, and there could be other reasons for the death. It doesn't say that these are all fentanyl intoxications. But just looking at it as a whole, with a large amount of data, this is what we observe. Joining us right now is attorney Ben Crump, of course, who represents uh, the uh, several family members of George Floyd's family. Uh, ben, this was, a, it was, it was amazing to listen to what the doctor said, walking through this thing in a very methodical way. Um, so, so that was first. But the second thing, Ben, is the prosecutors have been extremely deliberate how they are walking this thing down with the emotional testimony in week one, 
the, uh, setting up the week with the officers and then ending the week here um, with uh, this particular um, uh, doctor yesterday as well. Your assessment of how this has been going so far? Well, I think it's extremely compelling what uh, Keith Ellison and his team have been doing. And they have been very strategic, as you said, Roland Martin, doing the lay witness, the emotional witnesses at the very beginning of the trial, then talking about the use of force expert that I thought was most compelling because you had the police chief and other police officers for the first time that we've seen in a profound way come out from behind the blue wall of silence and tell the truth, hopefully setting a new precedence in America. But the day was really... Uh, I think the nail in Derek Chauvin's defense rolling. When you had these expert witnesses tell us uh, so convincingly what was the cause of death that was consistent, Roland Martin, with what we saw the first time we saw that video where George Floyd was tortured for nine minutes and 29 seconds. They corroborated what we saw in the video with the medical science. And so I think for any juror sitting there, it is more than enough evidence to hold Derek Chauvin criminally liable for killing George Floyd. I think when you begin to examine, um, again, this very methodical uh, nature, uh, we've watched the defense really be cornered and trapped, if you will, by having actual police officers, even on the force, testify against Derek Chauvin. Yeah, and, and it was riveting to us, and I don't know why it still is riveting. That's what police should do in every case, but we never see it. Roland, you covered Laquan McDonald's case a lot as well, where the young brother was shot 16 times in the back. And even in that case, the police chief, and the department still said that it was a justified shooting and killing of that young black man. So this is really a powerful and unusual testimony that we saw happen in the Derek Chauvin trial regarding the death of George Floyd. And uh, just to hear that black police chief really go and so matter-of-factly say that this was absolutely unnecessary where Derek Chauvin did was just powerful testimony. The, um, obviously, the defense has now had the opportunity to present their case. This is all on the prosecution right now. Um, but, it, it, but just your assessment of how this has gone thus far in terms of how they have presented and laid this case out, how is the Floyd family feeling uh, about what they're seeing and hearing every, each day in, the, in, the, in these not last nine days? Yeah, and, and Roland, they're praying a lot. You have met this family there from your home state, and they are cautiously optimistic. I know Attorney Monique Presley, and I talked to them some today about why we feel that the state is doing a good job. And we know we've been doing this long enough, Roland Martin, to know we can't take a conviction for granted. But this is the best prosecution of a police officer uh, charged with killing a black person in America that I have seen in my professional career. So I'm very grateful to Attorney Keith Ellison, uh, the first black attorney general in the state of Minnesota, who's a Democrat. And when you compare that to Breonna Taylor, Daniel Cameron, this uh, black attorney general who's a Republican, and how he did everything in his power to exonerate the police, it goes to show you that bl black voters matter and elections have consequences. All right, folks, that's got my unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily 
at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. I, I love this one here, y'all. I, I got to reach out. So uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott uh, sent this weak-ass letter to the Texas Rangers baseball team. Uh, dear Mr. Liebman, this is addressed to Mr. Neil Liebman. Thank you for the invitation to throw out the first pitch at the Texas Rangers home opening game. I was looking forward to it until Major League Baseball adopted what has turned out to be a false narrative about the election law reforms in Georgia. And based on that false narrative, moved the MLB All-Star game from Atlanta. It is shameful that America's pastime is not only being influenced by partisan political politics, but also, but also perpetuating... <laughs> false political narratives. The state of Texas was proud to help MLB host last season's National League playoff games and the World Series in Arlington. However, I will not participate in an event held by MLB and the state will not seek to host the All-Star Game or any other MLB special events. This decision does not diminish the deep respect I have for the Texas Rangers baseball organization, which is outstanding from top to bottom. I wish the team great success this season. Teresa, I, I, I've never seen a bunch of weak ass, impotent people. There, there's no group who thinks they're bigger victims than the Republican Party. Oh my God, everyone, this is these are election reforms. No, this is this is promoting the big lie. This is all about kissing Trump's ass and the crazy, deranged, sick, demented people who support him. They are angry that they lost. And so what they want to do is cheat. They're trying to cheat in your state by literally getting rid of statewide elected Supreme Court justices because they're mad with their judicial decision. These people love to talk about judicial activism. What they're saying is, if it don't go our way, we are not, we're going to change the rules. They're spoiled brats. Yeah, and I've never seen anything like it. And I've, I think this is a moment in history where we're starting to see the case study really unfold, starting in Georgia. Then, of course, you got Arizona, Michigan, and, of course, my hometown of Pennsylvania, where... We've seen, you know, Republican legislators have been ruling um, for decades. And so because of this election, I think they have now become emboldened. So once we saw, you know, Trump lose the election, it, I, I believe all that money that it, Trump was raising for the campaign also all spread to start other committees so they can do voter suppression laws. Georgia is really the case study that I think everybody is paying attention to and also seeing what works and what doesn't. So I think every state and every legislator that is, that is Democrat and also those who are Republican who knows this is wrong and really want to get on the right side of change really need to start understanding that this is coming to a state near you. And we also need to prepare ourselves by, by not just being on the defense mode, but also finding some, some solutions <laughs> also using their power of the pen to, to really ensure that the democratic process is not only a fair one, but a just one for future generations to come. Here's the whole deal, here's the whole deal for me, Michael. Um, now their new one is, okay, I mean, I mean, look at the laws in New York. Um, we're going to change those too. I mean, that, that, that to me is what's hilarious. <laughs> This new complaint, well, there are more early voting days in Georgia th th than there are in New York. So you think actually endorsing... I mean, there have been, there have been uh, progressives who have been advocating for a very long time a change in New York's archaic voting law system. Y'all, th that ain't one to stand on. 
No, it's not. And, I, you, you know, the the whole politics of, um, you know, how it intertwines with sports, you know, we've always had civil disobedience and, and, and certainly athletes and celebrities standing up. But I don't know if it ever really transcended like it did during the during 45 years after, obviously, Colin Kaepernick took his knee and then uh, tell him, you know, fire all the sons of bitches or whatever 45 said. It became a different kind of, uh, you know, more in the gutter about athletes and celebrities. I know that the right thinks that most athletes and celebrities are Democrats or on the left. Um, and so they, they take hits at that. But it doesn't help to the, you know, the first part of your, your question of the segment. It doesn't help when leaders, when business leaders kind of get very marshmallowish when these issues pop up. There's no reason in the world, obviously, whether it's Delta, Coca-Cola, or a host of other companies that are based in Georgia, saw this coming. They knew that, that the governor was going to sign it. So there's not like it came as a shock. So those first statements that came out that I just call a little marshmallowish, frankly wrong, um, and then they had to backpedal. Uh, instead of so, and if you're a Republican or a right leader, you know they're going to act marshmallowish, so you're able to bully them too, and that's what happened. And so until you stop being marshmallow, and come out and really take a stand, and really you know, and then you can't just threaten to leave or threaten to do something. You have to do it. <laughs> that's really the only thing that's going to matter to folks. Not that they care about a lot of those jobs, even though they again think. The perception is that a lot of those jobs at the airport uh, and at the Coca-Cola bottling plants are people of color and low-wage earners, so they don't care about them. That's not true. There are a lot of white folks that work at Delta and a lot of white folks that work at Coca-Cola. So, obviously, the, the hypocrisy is, is ridiculous, but until business leaders stand up, this kind of behavior is going to continue. Look, th this is real simple, uh, Cleo. Y'all, if y'all don't want corporations coming after you, if y'all don't want uh, the woke mob coming after you, how about you not embracing white supremacy? How about that? Let's do a trade-off. Let's do a trade-off. We won't counsel your ass if you don't embrace white supremacy. I, I think that's fair. You being so mean to these poor Republicans. Just no, I don't mean. give a damn about any of them. Like I don't, uh, I, mean, I don't give a damn about any of them. I don't either. I don't either. I'm, I'm, I'm being somewhat sarcastic, though. I, you, you are being mean, but I agree with the mean. Yes, I'm being very mean. I'm being very petty but because they, because they are trash, despicable people who are also sore losers. You got your ass whooped. Here's the whole deal. Okay, you're mad. You got your ass whooped. Take yeah, the but, L. But as you know, these people always get mad. And they've always gotten mad. And they always have started saying stuff like, well, this guy just said that because of Stacey Abrams and Biden's lies, the team left Atlanta. It's just, it's not logical. But we'll see how this rolls out ultimately because they've been lying and being illogical and moving the goalpost and saying things that aren't true. I mean, Donald Trump, the former president, lied all the way to the White House and lied all the way in the White House. And from, from my perspective, it wasn't for COVID-19, he would still be in the White House. So it'd be interesting to see how this all rolls out because despite white supremacy, these people who love white powers, despite their, their, their kicking and screaming, it seems that they're losing. It seems that they're losing based on voting and, any, and all logical things. But the lies have to work for them. And mixed mixed messages and stretching the truth has worked. Uh, so the fact that he hasn't finished singing, we'll see how it we'll see how it goes. All right, folks, back to our roadmark unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it, please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily 
at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. been frozen out facing an extinction level event we don't fight this fight right now you're not going to have black on an open letter posted to revolt.tv sean diddy combs joined the call of action to large corporations including gm to increase his ad budget for black owned companies this is what he wrote if you are neutral in, first of all, he said, uh, the same feet these companies use to stand with us in solidarity are the same feet they use to stand on our necks. When confronted by the leaders of several black-owned media companies, General Motors, GM, listed my network, Revolt, <clears throat> as an example of the black-owned media it supports. While Revolt does receive advertising revenue from GM, our relationship is not an example of success. Instead, Revolt, just like other black-owned media companies, fights for crumbs while GM makes billions of dollars every year from the black community. Exposing GM's historic refusal to fairly invest in black-owned media is not an assassination of character. It's exposing the way GM and many other advertisers have always treated us. No longer can corporate America uh, manipulate our community into believing that incremental progress is acceptable action. Corporations like General Motors have exploited our culture, undermined our power, and excluded black entrepreneurs from participating in the value created by black consumers. In 2019, brands spent $239 billion on advertising. Less than 1% of that was invested in black-owned media companies. Out of the roughly $3 billion General Motors spent on advertising, we estimate we estimate only 10 million was invested in black owned media. Only 10 million out of 3 billion. Like the rest of corporate America, General Motors is telling us to sit, shut up, and be happy with what we get. It's disrespectful that black owned media companies only represent 1% of the total advertising market. It's disrespectful that distributors refuse to carry black-owned media brands in an era where our impact and influence is undeniable. It's disrespectful that the same community that represents 14% of the population spends over $1.4 trillion annually is still the most economically undervalued and undeserved, undeserved at every level. Underserved at every level. To repeat, $1.4 trillion annually. The almighty black dollar. We demand that corporate America reinvest an equitable percentage of what you take from our community back into our community. If the black owned community represents 15% of your revenue, black owned media should receive at least 15% of the advertising spin. The same way you understand the power of our dollars, we understand our power to take them away from any corporation that doesn't give us the economic inclusion we deserve. We are prepared to weaponize our dollars. If you love us, pay us. Not a token investment, not a charity check or donation. The time is now. Radical change is the only option. You're either with us or you are on the other side. Let's go to our panel. You know, yesterday I talked about uh, Target announcing they were going to spend um, $2 billion by 2025. And... I sent them an email, Greg, and I said, first of all, how much are you spending right now? Because you're trying to get to $2 billion by 2025. I said, then separate black-owned media from the other black businesses. I said, so we can actually see what's your black-owned media and what's your supplier development. General Motors, after we met with them, they said they were doing 2% with black-owned media. They announced that by 2022, they would be doing, they would be doing 4%. And then the goal by 2025 is doing 8%. We argued, why in the hell can't you do 8% right now? They responded by, again, listing these black-owned media companies that they're, they're doing business with. Here's Diddy saying, yeah, we one of them, but y'all ain't sitting here 
doing what you should be doing with us. Bottom line is this here. The only way to force these people to the table is going back to April 3rd, 1968, when Dr. King said we must redistribute the pain. You're right, Roland. Um, and you've walked us through on several occasions how Diddy ended up with Revolt TV in the first place. Hell, he had something to do with that Viacom merger, right? And uh, we see Byron Allen saying that he merging from a meeting with Viacom over some negotiations, no details were disclosed. But this is where it's critical for us to understand this at a deeper level. Just like I'm often, you know, often say there is no we when we start talking about America. Uh, there is no we often when we start talking about capitalism. See, capitalism has a racial dimension, but please don't mistake race for class. What do I mean by this? This movement, including Diddy's letter, is indicative of the fact that these, these corporations are a little nervous, but it's it will be classic capitalism for them to pick a few black folk, and Revolt TV will be one, give them some subsidy and say, see, this is what we're doing. This is very important. This is why I, and, and, you know, I, I'm very, I'd be interested to hear uh, Brittany and, and Misha, both of y'all on this, because I'm too old, but because I'm a teacher, I know what the young people, a little bit of what they do on social media, and I'm getting dip my toe in Twitter. I am cracking up at all these mace pictures that are coming up in Diddy's feed, and people saying, dude, ain't nobody forgot that you're the one that don't pay black artists. So see, Diddy <laughs> is hell if there's five cents to make. And what capitalists will do is pick out in the class structure a handful of petty bourgeois Negroes, which is why any demand must be equitably distributed around black media. It's those little women-owned companies. It's those little companies. You know, write the check to Roller Martin unfiltered. But don't mess around and think because Diddy is right on this that he is no different than a clock that is always right at least twice a day. <laughs> the thing here, to Greg's point there, um, Brittany, about how f folks try to pick folks off, is when we met with General Motors, we said it should be $200 million a year going to black-owned media companies, and we want a 10-year agreement with 5% escalators in the contract. That was on a Monday. Wednesday, because they had not set a meeting, now we met with the chief marketing officer of General Motors, but they we requested a meeting with the CEO of Mary Barra. They did not schedule that meeting. So an ad was taken out in the Wednesday paper. They got angry that there was a second ad and then canceled the Thursday meeting. On Thursday, General Motors announced their target goals of 4% by 2022, 8% by 2025, but Mayor Barra still has not met with us. Now, here's what they have been doing. And see, again, I'll be transparent. They have been calling around trying to meet with us individually. Of course, of course. Um, perfect example. They drastically cut the fun cut the funding of American Black Film Festival, almost down to zero. Well, a week after our meeting, um, this was posted by Jeff Friday in the American Black Film Festival. They posted this. Go to my computer. Happy to have Cadillac GM Diversity return as a multi-year partner for ABFF and ABFF Honors. Wow. Now, I know how much they got. And here's the deal. They could have gotten more had they negotiated as a collective. Hello. See, what we're trying to tell the other Black-owned media companies is don't get picked off. Because see, General Motors has not agreed to our demand. What we said is, you're spending X billions of dollars, we want X percentage, 5% of that, we estimate this to come out to be $200 million. They say our numbers are wrong. We say, what's your numbers? They say, well, we can't give for competitive reasons. Well, don't tell me my number wrong, you can't give me the right number. 
Then we estimated that the black spin was five or six million. They said, your numbers are wrong. What's the right number? We can't tell you. Well, don't tell my numbers wrong. You can't give me the right number. So they've reached out to me for a meeting. And here's my whole deal. I'll meet, but we still want the meeting with the CEO. Because my deal is, why do we have to wait to 2022? Y'all, it's April 2021. The, the upfronts just started. Why we got to wait to April 2022 for you to get to 4% when you can do it right now? Roland, <laughs> I have to laugh. Um, you you really almost have to laugh. I mean, and, and thank you for talking about this. Let, let me just say, you've been talking about this issue and bringing this important issue um, to the forefront of our community for a long time. And I stand with you um, on this and everybody who's speaking up about this issue, because it's time for corporate America to reinvest an equitable percentage of what they take from our community back into our community. We made and continue to make corporate America and the wealth it generates possible without getting a piece of the pie. And you know, when we think of the way that GM responded, it felt so patronizing, right? Like like you said, they want to tell you that all your figures are wrong, but don't want to tell you what the figures the figures are. They, you know, they want to send representatives, but they don't want to they don't want to have you speak to the CEO. They want to give you long-term projections like they don't have the money right this second to fund black owned media. That's a joke. See it makes think that they can continue to incrementally, right, incrementally give us the funds that are necessary is so, so patronizing and so offensive. But, but, but actually, guess what, Manisha, they can. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they can is when black people play themselves small. All right, folks, back to our whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it, please do because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Oh, let's talk about this case in Texas where um, on her 46th birthday, the family of an unarmed black woman was shot and killed by a Baytown police officer in May of 2019, they have filed a federal law, civil rights lawsuit today. Uh, Pamela Turner encountered Officer Juan De La Cruz, uh, and she was in emotional distress. De La Cruz was indicted by Harris County Grand Jury in September 2020, more than a year after Turner's death. He's charged with felony aggravated assault by a public servant. Uh, ben, you put a video out, uh, and this took, so this took place in Baytown, Texas, or Bel Air, Texas? Baytown, Texas. Okay, Baytown, Texas. Right. And so, uh, uh, so, so Baytown, folks, uh, is uh, east of Houston. Uh, if so, if you're traveling up towards Beaumont, Texas, towards Louisiana, uh, you would go through Baytown. I know it very well. I have lots of relatives who live there. Uh, and uh, this it was, I was, I saw a video that you put out on Instagram describing how heinous this is. I, I want to play that and then talk about it. So here we go. If you were outraged when you saw the video of how police tragically killed George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota, then you should be equally outraged when you see the video of how the police tragically killed Pam Turner, an unarmed black woman in Baytown, Texas.
the top the It is shocking and stunning, Ben Crump, to watch that video and to think that his only way of containing her was to shoot and kill her? Yeah, it, it is just so outrageous, Roland, when you think about it. Attorney Devin Jacob and I filed a federal civil rights wrong for death lawsuit, and it goes to this disrespect for black women. I mean, to shoot her down like a dog when he could have did any number of things. Monique Presley and I talked about how he could have created distance. He could have called for backup. He could have got behind cars. He could have yelled verbal commands. He could have did any number of things uh, other than fire five shots, hitting uh, Pamela Turner three times, one in the face one in the chest, one in the stomach, and this unarmed black woman who was on her back screaming, I'm pregnant. I mean, Roland, if you are outraged by George Floyd, we got to get outraged uh, in justice for Pamela Turner. Breonna Taylor's mother, uh, Tamika Palmer, came to Houston to stand with uh, Chelsea Rubin, the 23-year-old daughter of Pamela Turner, who has pretty much been fighting a lot alone by herself. So I'm so grateful, Roland, that you're covering this matter because we need everybody to stand with our black women. We got to protect our black women. They cannot be killed like this and nobody say a word about it. And this t this took place in 2019, two years ago? And, and two years ago, May 13th. And so we're going to march on Baytown on May 13th if you're free. We would love to have you come back home to help lead the effort because I do think this is going to continue to grow like Breonna Taylor. And it's one of those things where Breonna's mother is going to come. We're going to show the world that her life matters. And get this, Roland Martin, he's still employed by the Baytown Police Department. He is still a cop? He is still a cop. Was he, put on, was he, was he put on desk duty? Well, they, they have him, uh, I guess, on desk duty or whatever, but they have not terminated his employment yet. And when you think about the disrespect between black women uh, and what they get, when George Floyd video went public, how he was killed, in 90 hours, they terminated all the police officers. I asked at the press conference when we were there with Tamika Palmer, how long did it take for them to fire the police officers after they killed Breonna Taylor? And she told me it took nine months for them to fire the police officer after they killed her daughter, who was in her own apartment. And now it's almost two years, and Baytown, Texas, still hasn't fired the police officer. Uh, that is absolutely shocking and stunning. And so certainly uh, keep us abreast uh, of the developments in there. Uh, and you said there's going to be uh, a public demonstration on May 13th? May 13th, the two-year anniversary. Okay. All right, then. Oh, and, and, and also, Roland, the trial, the criminal trial is set to begin on May 25th, which, ironically, is the one-year anniversary of the killing of George Floyd. Wow. Uh, that is... Um, uh, this, and also, uh, the officer was indicted. What was the charge? It was uh, assault by a public uh, officer like a manslaughter charge, not a murder charge. Not a murder charge. Right. Wow. Ben Crump, uh, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, thank you so very much. And, and let me say this here, um, and Ben, while I have you, uh, I need people to understand, Ben Crump does not try criminal cases. Uh, I, I need to say that, Ben, because I get all these people and they comment on YouTube and on social media. Uh, Big Crump keeps losing these cases. You're not the prosecutor. <laughs> the attorney yeah. for the family cannot prosecute cases. You can't indict anybody. You, you can file civil. You can file a civil lawsuit. You can negotiate settlements for families, but you don't get to prosecute anybody. 
<laughs> exactly. The Seventh Amendment of the Constitution say all a private law you can do is file a lawsuit for compensation for wrongful death. It's the Tenth Amendment. The prosecutors are who they should be upset and holding accountable. But Roland, thank you for always uh, giving a voice to educate us and engage us and most importantly empower our people you are so necessary to the culture uh ben i certainly appreciate it thanks a bunch we'll talk to you soon god bless uh man that uh th that video there is shocking stunning uh to sit there and witness and the fact that it took place two years ago and just finding out about it uh, is even more uh, stunning as well. Uh, just unbelievable. Let me go to my pound. Dr. Greg Carr is chair, Department of Afro-American Studies at Howard University. Amisha Cross, political analyst and Democratic strategist, and Brittany Lee Lewis, she's political analyst. Glad to have you both. Um, Brittany, to to see that video, that's a pre that's a pregnant black woman, and I, I keep going back to this issue of what, what sending police off, the woman's in emotional distress. You, we keep sending cops, people who, who are trained to kill people, to resolve these, these mental issues. This is what happens and you get these white cops whose first instinct is, oh, I can't control this black woman. Boom, 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 you're dead. Roland, let me, let me just say, first off, I'm still shaken um, by watching the film. Like, I'm the, I'm almost to the point of, of tears because it's, it, they, they truly do not view us as humans. That is, and I, and I think that's the thing that hurts me the most. They do not view us as humans. And I think this goes back to the bigger question, right? Um, you know, if this trial, if that video that we just watched, um, if all of the years, the years, the decades, the centuries of police brutality and, and black death at the hands of the police doesn't teach us anything, it's that um, police training is not a full on solution to this problem. We can't train them into viewing us as humans. We can't train them into respecting us. Um, it's a band aid to a much more complex issue. And I know I always say this on the show, um, but again, we have to go back to the roots of police and why policing exists in the first place. Um, it is certainly not to protect and serve us as black folks. Um, and I hope that we can continue to demand to, you know, defund the police for this very reason. Because like you said earlier, this is not, not only do they not view us as humans, um, but they're also, even if they are to stay in place in the current, uh, you know, in the current way that they are, you know, they are not trained to deal with medical emergencies. They are not trained to deal, um, at least not adequately, and they shouldn't be dealing with these issues because they don't have the necessary skill set. Um, so I, I pray that we continue to push for defunding the police and thinking of, of new ways um, to envision public safety. Um, Greg Carr, um, it, it is indescribable to, to have to talk about these type of videos. There are people who say, yo, we shouldn't show them. But I'm, I'm, but too much of, too much of me is like Mamie Till Mobley. No, America needs to see what they did to my baby. Because if we act as if, no, 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 don't show it. That's just too much. No, no, it needs to be seared in the minds of America. Agreed. Um, I agree with what you said, uh, Brittany. Uh, we have to now not rethink, but really think about public safety. We are not part of the public. Not only are we not human, we are not living creatures. We are a threat to be neutralized. Uh, this bastard, La Cruz, shouldn't be comfortable in his bed at night. He shouldn't be comfortable on the job. He shouldn't be comfortable going back and forth to the job. He should be living in the same fear uh, for his life that we live in. At that point, we could talk about a common framework. There is no common framework. Black people are to be killed. 
Black men are to be killed. Black women are to be killed. Billie Holiday's birthday was yesterday. She was handcuffed to the bed that she died in by the goddamn federal government, agents of the police, because she was not a human being. Uh, Pamela Turner cannot receive justice. Justice would be at least restoring her life and it'd be beautiful, wouldn't it be, if we could just exchange De La Cruz's life for hers. Every time you pull your taser out, you punk. You get tased yourself. Every time you shoot, empty your clip into a black woman, those bullets go into your body. What we saw in Minnesota today, we can't be distracted. And we'll later on we'll talk about voting rights, but, but the parallel is this. Uh, what Nelson, Eric Nelson is counting on, the defense attorney for Chauvin and his team, they're counting on one person in that jury who does not look at black people as human. So while we are all, as human beings, bowled over by Dr. Tobin's uh, description today, that all the breath had left, George, all the oxygen had left George Floyd's body, and that cracker kneeled on him for another three minutes and two seconds, as we heard the testimony yesterday of all the experts that said, this isn't a question of meth or anything else that killed uh, George Floyd, understand that the logic at play, whether it be there in Texas or in Minnesota, is this. Is there one on the jury who will who will say and agree with Nelson's cocktail of meth, rage, criminal, he's not a, he's a big criminal, and there was a mob threatening me, so that they say, like that cop shooting the sister, you know what, you had to do it, man. Because these are dangerous things. This there, there is no there is no common framework of understanding. So we until we understand that, until we understand that, and showing these videos maybe gets us a little step closer. But we then have to change the language to interpret what those videos are showing us. Until we understand that, we will continue to bark up the wrong tree in this country and start talking. Well, I can't believe, and I can't believe. No, not only should you believe it, you should expect it because this is the thing that this criminal enterprise was set up to do since the day that these people showed up on these shores and did it to the Native Americans. Amisha, um, we we talk about. Reckoning, we talk about where we are. We dealt with people who, oh, no, 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 don't say defund because, you know, we don't want to get uh, the white folks riled up. This is where we have to be so hardcore that we say, no, 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 we will not stop. We, 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 we will not stop. I, I mean, Sunday was the 53rd anniversary of the murder of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I've interviewed Reverend Jackson, Ambassador Andrew Young, Bill Lucy, Reverend Dr. James Lawson, all the individuals who were there, who were in Memphis. And what is still stunning to me is to hear them say that even as they sat in room 306 of the Lorraine Motel, hours earlier he had been murdered their focus was, we, we cannot stop. We will not stop. John Lewis told me he didn't grieve for another three months. What I'm saying is to this generation, we gotta ratchet it even more, put even more pressure. We saw, we saw those protests last year. Yo, we can't let America sleep. Um, I'm sitting here, so, so when Ben said, and I'm, I'm looking now, um, and again, folks, th this is what happens when um, you don't have to seek uh, permission. Um, I'm looking here, give me a second. Um, yeah, I can go ahead and say it. Uh, we'll be in Baytown May 13th to broadcast that march. We'll be there. I don't have to ask anybody else's opinion. We have to keep this stuff front and center because MSNBC is not going to do it. CNN is not going to do it. Fox News is not going to do it. We have no choice but to continue to press and press and press. No, you're absolutely correct, Roland. And to your, to your point just a few moments ago, our mere existence as black people in this country causes white people to be riled up. We don't have to be doing anything but living and raising our kids. And at the end of the day, white people are going to be riled up. 
let us not, you know, get highfalutin and actually want to have rights as ensured by, you know, us being born under the red, white, and blue right here in these United States and actually push to have our civil rights recognized. That's us taking a bridge too far. I feel like what we're seeing right now, and I hate the term racial reckoning, I really do, because racial reckoning is thrown about in this country whenever the rest of the globe sees us and asks, what the hell are you doing, United States? How do you actually police the entire rest of the globe about, you know, uh, about having these anti-democratic standards, about um, their humanitarian, their failure to actually recognize humanity. Meanwhile, in your own backyard, you are treating black people worse than dogs. You are holding your knee on people. You are holding your knee on the neck of a man. And we're watching this trial continue to go forward, where we've heard from a pulmonologist who made it very clear in no uncertain terms that the knee on the neck of George Floyd, the cutting off of his oxygen, was what caused his death. Not any level of drugs, not any past drug history, nothing in that day would have caused his death other than the knee on the neck. And he made it also clear that it could have been you or I or anyone else who was an otherwise healthy person with no prior history of drug abuse whatsoever. And had a sustained knee been on our neck in the exact same framework for over nine minutes, we would not have made it either. So I think that what we're seeing here is basically, a, a, again, a televised process of brutality against African Americans. and. You know, I would hope that we see jurors that understand what's going on. I don't have a very strong hope for it, but I do hope that we see jurors that understand what's going on, but also that African Americans of all ages aren't lulled away by this and have full recognition that, yes, corporations are signing these pledges. Yes, we're seeing some movement by them in terms of heralding Black Lives Matter, but it's going to be more than that. These same corporations play this song and dance every few years after there is a, a, a major issue um, where a African-American, unarmed African-American dies. Then we watch as soon as it's no longer at the helm of MSNBC or it's no longer played on loop on CNN. When those stations no longer care, guess what? That outside world no longer cares either. But we still have these issues facing our community every single day. So I do thank you know, our, our, our forebearers when it comes to the civil rights movement, our forebearers who were able to continue to carry that, to carry that lantern, to continue to force change, even though they watched, you know, the folks who watched Martin Luther King die, who marched with him and then sat in the room and had those conversations and were able to somehow keep their mourning within themselves, but continue to do the work that is worth doing. That's the work that we all have to do and all have to be invested in. Because as we can see on a daily basis, our very humanity is at risk because the greater society, the white society that continues to ignore our existence and our existence is not only humans, but people that are worthy of being treated equally. That's not something that they're willing to do. And that's not something that the majority of them are actually willing to even stand for. Give you a little, but not too much. But if you start talking about equity in general, no, because that puts you on the same framework and the same platform as them. And they don't want that. And they will fight to the end to eradicate it. That's, that's the reason we saw the January 6th insurrection. That's the reason why people won't let go of a lot of these theories that they call Trumpism that existed long before Trump, but actually were said out loud <laughs> during his presidency. It's not going away anytime too soon. And I think that we have to be invested in this long haul fight because that's what we're in for. Folks, um, look, I'm, I'm making the commitment. We'll be there. Uh, Pamela Turner. May 13th, uh, the protest that will take place in Baytown, Texas, uh, which is uh, not far from Houston at all. Uh, we want to see as many of you there. I will get details uh, from Ben Crump uh, and others uh, with regards uh, to uh, all of this information to pro provide it for you. Uh, we will make our way down there to broadcast that uh, as well, because again, we need to be able to keep the focus on that. Uh, we'll also find out if that trial is going to be broadcast uh, like we're seeing the George Floyd trial uh, right now. Uh, and if so, uh, we're going to make sure that we carry it right here on Roland Martin Unfiltered. All right, folks, back to our Roland Martin Unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. 
please do because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. In February, the owners of an Arizona food truck, What You Cooking, uh, were assaulted by a white man during a business meeting. The couple now fears the man will not not be properly charged for the hate crime. Uh, folks, where do you see this video? So in this particular video, uh, we first saw this uh, on Now This. Um, it, and i got to show you this video here. Uh, they were sitting in this meeting. Then all of a sudden, uh, the man just pulls out a gun on them in the middle of the meeting. They call the cops. Uh, it takes the cops 11 minutes to get there. Uh, just shocking and stunning. Watch this. Okay, uh, so um, again, it's, it's, it's an unbelievable story here. Uh, and uh, we're joining me now the co-owners of What You're Cooking Food Truck, Brittany and Solomon Odobaggio. Glad to have both of you uh, with us. Uh, first, first and foremost, um, so set it up for, for, the, for our audience. Um, you, you were working with this shared kitchen, correct? Yes, so um, we were renting um, uh, the refrigerator unit and a freezer unit. Um, we, um, it's a commissary kitchen, and we were also prepping our meals um, so we can sell on our food truck um, with this kitchen. And so y'all go there for a meeting. What was the purpose of the meeting? So after only um, using their kitchen for me and my husband, we received a notice, um, a 30-day notice. Um, they no longer wanted us in their kitchen. So Tom, too, um, told us that he wanted to meet with us on February 5th to discuss reasons of departure. All right. And so y'all go to this meeting and... Um, what what happens uh, in this meeting here, Solomon? He comes in with an all lives matter and he starts com complaining and ripping black lives matter. So my wife was in a meeting. She can actually that part. I was getting a food truck serviced um, bit before all that. Like it led up. I got there when it led up to you see me sitting at the table. Um, he put up the weapon, but my wife was there when he. Uh, brought the All Lives Matter shirt. You know, he's banging on the table and uh, it had, you know, the words uh, black crossed out, you know, first on a shirt, then it has white, and then it left uh, straight and gate open. But, you know, this thing for departure, that shirt that doesn't have any, it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, departure. So, so does I, so does what, so, so Brittany, you're sitting there. Then all of a sudden, yeah. just out of the blue, he just comes in with his All Lives Matter shirt and starts ranting against Black Lives Matter? Yeah, so I was just sitting there and I noticed when he was um, walking up to me where he wanted to meet at, I noticed he had a piece of clothing folded in his hand. And, you know, once we began talking and he started giving reasons of why he didn't want us there, he um, became enraged and he starts unfolding the shirt and he shows me the shirt and he just starts yelling at me and calling me racist and pointing at me. And he begins telling me, um, you know, I can sit here all day, excuse my French, but he's like, I can sit here all day and tell you how shitty your business is and um, wouldn't get much like he just kept going on and on. he was just so enraged and um, I told him you know I said Tom um, you need to remain professional and calm down um, and you know at that point I was like you know call your husband get him here because he was making me feel um, very uncomfortable so at so point, so so okay so 
Had y'all before had any conversation about Black Lives Matter? Did y'all have BLM posters on your on your truck? Uh, did, did y'all have any previous discussions or run in over the issue of race or one of these high profile cases? No, we did not. So all of a sudden, dude That's just come in. Was- he just comes in, just going nuts about Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter. Yes, yeah. correct. The detective. When we go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We met with the we met with the prosecutor on, a, on the twenty fourth of March, and you know the detective stated like he actually forgot the shirt, so he went back and grabbed the shirt to bring it back to her from the video footage that they had. So okay, so so Brittany, this happens. You all of a sudden you call your husband, um, uh, Solomon. Yes. You, Solomon, you drop everything to come over there. And I was getting service. Huh? I was I was in the middle of getting the food truck service. Our batteries had died because the uh, ground wire wasn't connected to the power wire. And so you and, so, so you race over. How long are mm-hmm. you there before he pulls? He tries to pull a gun out. Oh uh, man, we was there. Okay, so I walk in the door. Like ten minutes. It was like ten minutes before he showed up, but then it was like 15, 20 minutes before he pulled a gun out. So you didn't. So neither one of you knew he was carrying a gun. No. Absolutely. Not. And he wasn't. He didn't have the gun until um, after my husband. And when we were looking for him, that's when look, because when he had the meeting with me, he was sitting up. He was sitting up straight and everything. But if you notice, once my husband comes in, he kind of slouches because he has something in his back, which was found out to be the gun. So so, so you're saying that when he met with you, the gun wasn't on him. And then when you decided to call your husband, that's what that's what he went and got his gun and put it put it in his uh, put it uh, in, uh, in the back of his uh, uh, jeans. Yes. Correct. So so all of a sudden, OK, you're sitting there. Two of you sitting there, mm-hmm. and Brittany, uh, excuse me, Solomon. When he makes a move, do you do you do, do your mind is you saying what is he doing? I think he's going for a gun. Um. So he took a deep breath. That alerted me off the back. He took a deep breath, and then he hesitated. But I watched his eye contact the whole time. And yes, he when he reached for his back weapon. So all of a sudden you jump up, you 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 begin to wrestle with him, um, mm-hmm. Brittany. He's telling you call the cops, call the cops, but you're scared to call the cops. Yeah, absolutely, because of the world that we live in today, and you see, you know, African Americans getting killed or minorities getting killed, um, and you know, just because they have a weapon or or just for no apparent reason, you know. And I felt as though the situation didn't look right. We're two African Americans in a white establishment, and there's a weapon involved. Where I felt like we definitely ain't gonna get stereotyped. This call right now, this can be it for both of us, you know. So I was really nervous, and I just kept reminding myself. I kept saying, you know what? Just keep on stressing and stating on the call that we are African American, and your husband's African American. He's not the suspect. Just make sure you keep making that clear, no matter what. That's my first thought, you know. Um, there was also people, other tenants in the kitchen, and I was actually thinking to ask them for help before calling authority, honestly. Man, them folks ran out the door. Yeah, they, they, they ran out the door. They wouldn't give us the address. So it was just like, it was so scary. Like, that was one of the scariest moments of my life. And it's like, they not even cooperating with the, like, the detective, you know, asked them to write a statement or, you know, what happened. They didn't, they said, oh, we don't even know. We, we was leaving. Yeah. Like, and they, but, which was a lie because they all was outside right when the incident happened I mean they was inside but then when the incident happened when the cops got there everybody moved outside so all right cops come there they finally arrive they detain him his wife comes and then what does she do to y'all yes, I- we have a seat. and we were still writing our reports and she comes out and she's just like, it's like basically like it's time to go, come get your stuff. And we were just in shock because for one, it is a weekend, it's Friday and it was like 4.30ish. And now all of a sudden we have to get out. Like, where are we gonna store all this inventory? You know? So you, so, so when you say all this, so, no so when you say all this inventory, you're talking about food. 
Correct. Yes. How, we have uh, lost a lot of. How, uh, how much? How much food did you uh, did uh, did y'all have there in terms of and, and, and what did it cost? Um, it was it was like a couple of thousands worth probably because we, my husband he travels to go get our meats, um, and so we had all that stored. We we buy bulks of it so that way we will have enough, you know, until we're ready to go back out out of town. And so we had our. If I had to give an estimate, uh, I want to say what about a couple of grand. Yeah, probably a couple. Grand. Yeah, like a couple of grand, and then that's not even including because you got to think we have to pay to get all this shipment back. We have to pay to go there, room, you know. So it's just it was just so inconvenient, and it was very I just no remorse. Um, her husband literally just tried to kill us for no apparent reason. Um, and so, so talk about uh, when y'all uh, y'all said uh, y'all did an interview. Y'all said that y'all thought y'all were gonna lose uh, your food truck uh, and lose your business. Uh, how so? Because going to find a commissary kitchen. Everybody wants five thousand a month or four thousand a month. Or I mean, that's like ridiculous. If I mean, if you really ask us, but. Um, so first of all, so you're saying you're saying you're saying you say it's going to so, cost you for a shared kitchen four to five thousand a month for the shared kitchen. Well, uh, what were you paying at the at this particular place here? Uh, he was only charging us four hundred a month. Four hundred dollars a month. Four hundred dollars a month. Fifty, because they added four hundred and fifty. They oh. had added a fifty dollar fee. Um, so because they had add uh, a freezer. Yeah. So basically, y'all were spending four four hundred fifty dollars a month. But you start calling other places, it was going to be 10 times that to use their kitchen. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Like it, their kitchen was actually more convenient. It was, you know. And it was paranoid. Like, like um, anxiety is like, it, it's, it gives us anxiety to be in public, you know, around a bunch of people. We're always paying attention to make sure. Like, it's the first thing I look at is somebody hit. You feel me? Why well, I got to do that? Right. You know, I shouldn't have to live like that. We shouldn't have to live like that. Mm -hmm. It's like the trauma is affecting everybody, not just us, our kids. You know, mm -hmm. once again, like our daughter, she's eight. You know, she woke up in the middle of the night, 430 in the morning, crying. Oh, I had a bad dream that the guy in the kitchen tried to kill you guys, or you know, try to hurt us. So, you know, that's like for an eight year old to feel that, you know, what I'm saying it's like nobody should fear at all. Yeah. You know, and, and then you got to think it's like. Being in public, y'all said that the so so talk about what the police told y'all. If this guy may so, what's the status of the case? So basically, um, we are being told that he is not. Um, he might not do any, any jail, jail time. time. So basically, what he's there trying to get him to plead out to one aggravated count. Uh, uh, one felonious uh, count with, um, I mean, uh, yeah, one disorderly conduct felonious or something like that. But this happened to two people. Why is he pleading out to one charge? And then, let alone, he put everybody in that kitchen in jeopardy, you know? Right. So it's like. So the, so how, so with, with that, would that mean no jail time? Is that is that what, is that what they're saying? Yeah. And it's a possibility that he might, you know, do no jail time or probation. Like how if the shoe was on the other foot, this wouldn't it right. wouldn't be fair. I have a hot bond. They would have never let me out within anywhere from. He went to the hospital right after the you know situation, but then he was in the hospital for five, like six hours. They let him out at four thirty three in the morning the next day, and they told us they weren't gonna let him out until we file a restraining order. And they still let and him out. And they still let him out. And he's still out. So it's like a slap on the wrist. It's like you can go around harassing minorities, and then you don't. Nothing happens. You know. Wow. He, he authority like power i feel like not only that we since our story went viral there has been other tenants that rent it from their kitchen and they have come forward and they are they minorities, are minorities. and they said they were harassed um, as well um there's
was a caught on camera. And just like we told the prosecutor, we asked her, why is he out? And they go, well, he has no history of this. And it's like, well, look at all these mass shooters. Do they have history of this killings? No, they just snapped one day. And that's what he did. Literally, he just snapped for no reason. Like, you've seen it in his eyes. Um, when I, when you see me go over there to try to make sure he, my husband had him secure, he was to pull the trigger, but the finger was stuck in his shirt. Like the trick, the gun was stuck in his shirt, so he couldn't get his finger through the trigger. And it was like he was literally trying to shoot us. Wow. Um, it, it, folks said now this, the story uh, got posted. Uh, yesterday, uh, and I saw the GoFundMe, yesterday uh, it was at uh, 95000 uh, when I checked uh, yesterday, yesterday uh, morning. Uh, folks, go to my computer, please. Uh, right now, um, it is at uh, $181,655. Uh, Y'all are trying to raise uh, $250,000. Uh, and you're, you're trying to raise the $250,000 uh, to, to, to do what for your business? So we are either, we're trying to transition to a restaurant um, because, you know, I... I feel safe to even be in a commissary kitchen. Like I, would, I think I would just be too paranoid, thinking someone's trying to kill me, or you know, um, having our own restaurant space would just be way better. Um, before we even started our uh, food truck, we were doing catering, and our menu was much larger. So once we got a food truck, we had to limit it. So we feel, you know, right now is our time to, you know, be able to. Um, expand and have our uh, menu that we originally had, um, you know, a variety, a variety of things, excuse me, instead of, you know, a shorter menu. Well, folks, uh, y'all can actually go to, if you go to, if you go to GoFundMe, go, go back, uh, just put in uh, Solomon and Brittany uh, Odubajo, uh, O-D-U-B-A-J-O, right there, uh, and you can see the GoFundMe. Uh, Solomon and Brittany, we certainly appreciate it, you for joining us, uh, and certainly good luck, and hopefully, uh, hopefully this guy uh, will face some jail time for what he tried to do. Yeah, absolutely. And can we just say, you know, we want to thank everyone who's reached out to us, whether it be a repost or, you know, the money. We really appreciate it and we feel truly blessed. All right. We appreciate it. Thank we actually you. care. So thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. All right, thank you. So we, we were talking earlier, Johanna, about racism being a public health threat. This is a perfect example of what just being black you go through and and so here you have these folks guy tries to pull a gun out they're still they're now de they are now dealing with ptsd as a result of an act of racism that has an impact on health exactly and again this is just one incident that we that goes viral right and we know so many so many others you know when you have um, kids who are strip searched after school um, by police officers when you have resource um, officers on campus handcuffing kids for 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 just misbehaving for speaking too loud for getting into altercation which is what children do all the time um, so this this is um, this is what we're talking about racism being a public health crisis because it impacts every aspect of our, of our lives and one can argue that perhaps this man has uh, a mental health issue uh, but based on the testimony of, of of the young woman she indicated that others have to come forward black tenants in particular have said they have experienced similar action by by, by this by this uh, landlord um so again um, it is a clear um example of racism and how it impacts our health because now these individuals are, are are not even feeling don't even feel safe to be in in the public and, and as i'm looking at the young woman you can tell this is someone who is very frightened um especially considering that they have um released um this um this individual from, from, from jail um and she doesn't know what this man will do again if he's going to strike back. So I am so sorry for what happened to them. Um, and it, it breaks my heart and, and I wish them much success. Um, and it just shows how, uh, how, how giving the American people are in this country, how so many people have rallied behind this young woman and, and her significant other to support her business and to help her to take her business to the next level. And I wish her nothing but the best. But this is also... The rally is we shouldn't have to deal with that. We, we shouldn't have to 
uh, go through that. We shouldn't have to experience that. All right, folks, back to our Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. Roland Martin Unfiltered.